Welcome to the Bombshell Business Podcast, where driven fempreneurs learn how to become more bold, brave, and unwaveringly confident. Turn your dreams into actionable, marketable, and profitable plans and make your business irresistible. Hey, gorgeous. Welcome back to the Bombshell Business Podcast. I'm your host and chief bombshell, Amber Hurdle. Today, we're rocking episode four of this podcast, I believe. And I just want to thank you for tuning in and allowing me to be a part of your quest to become a more bold, brave, and unwaveringly confident woman in your business and your life. Of course, that's what my definition of bombshell is. I'm so glad you're here tuning in today. It's a great episode. Um, But really... just wish I could have a glass of champagne with each of you so I can get to know you, find out about your businesses, find out about your pain points. I feel like you're getting to know me and my personality and you all are um, just out there with all these amazing stories that I don't get to hear about. So I hope you'll think about shooting me an email or comment on the episode show notes so that I can have that chance to learn a little bit about you too. And um, of course, if you want to do that with a glass of champagne in your hand, then um, of course, I highly encourage that. Uh, So anyways, today we are in part two of my three-part series covering my business success pyramid. So last episode, we discussed the foundation of the pyramid, um, which is your company culture. So if you missed it, go back to the episode before this one and listen to it and then download the free worksheet so you can either create or revisit your company mission, your values, your service basics, and your people practices. Um, All of those things are very, very important to the foundation of any business, even if you're a solopreneur, um, or if you, um, you know, have several employees or even, um, virtual employees or anything like that. So make sure you go back to that. It comes with a worksheet. Um, so without that foundation in place, and then I'll get off this cause I really want you to go back and listen to that after you finish listening to this one. It's, it's just difficult to build a brand and to promote your company consistently while making solid decisions on a day-to-day basis without those foundational elements, without those measuring sticks. So, um, make sure you do that. And then today we're going to talk about the second layer of my business success pyramid, your company brand. So before we even get into that, though, like the actual what is a brand and some examples, let's chat about the definition of business. So Merriam-Webster has a simple definition, and even that, I think, um, doesn't really explain it super well. Merriam-Webster says it's the activity, the definition of business is the activity of making, buying, or selling goods or providing services in exchange for money. Okay, makes sense. You're making something, um, somebody's buying something, you're selling something, you're providing a service, you get money for that. Somebody does, right? You're, You're exchanging money. But my definition of business, I think, is even more simple. It really doesn't matter what it is that you're doing. My definition of business is you're solving someone's problems in exchange for financial compensation, right? So what problems do you solve? Um, if you're a day spa, you might solve the problem that people just can't seem to get relaxed or they have muscle aches or they have, um, trouble skin. Um, they might have a grooming problem that they need you to cut their hair. Um, if you're a fitness professional, they might need fitness guidance. They don't know about exercise. They don't know how to safely exercise. Perhaps they had an injury and they need um, more one-on-one attention in order to ensure that their exercise is safe. It might be that they are um, trying to lose weight. And even at that, you could go deeper into that. Why are they trying to lose weight? What's the real problem at hand? What problem do you solve? You might be a realtor who helps people find and purchase a home, or maybe you're a realtor that helps people stage and sell their home. Um, That is a problem that they have that they don't want to solve for themselves. So they are willing to separate from their cold, hard cash in order to work with you to help them solve that problem. So I want you to think about that. Now, I have um, 
I, I work with my bombshells, my female entrepreneurs who want to be bold, brave, and unwaveringly confident in their business and life. And then I also work with um, corporations, mostly Fortune 500s, and primarily in the hospitality industry. And I make no secret that my favorite client is Lowe's Hotels. And for all of my other clients, um, I'm just going to say that Lowe's Hotels is my favorite because every time I come in, which is pretty frequently um, over the past three years, they've implemented what I've taught them. And so they get results. And that's really important to me. So um, just before I clarify why they're my favorite, everybody else, you could be my favorite too, if you really, really implement the things that I tell you to do and then show me how you made change in your business. But anyways, a um, little sidebar there. Um, I want to talk about them and their brand because I'm super familiar with it and because they have a really strong culture um, as their foundation. So I know I can speak to their branding knowing that it's resting on that nice, solid um, first part of my business success pyramid. So um, Lowe's Hotels, what's the problem that they solve? Lodging, right? People need lodging. So Lowe's Hotels solves that problem for them. It's people who can't just go to a different city with their bed and their roof. Their mama doesn't live in town. Maybe they don't have a friend who's, uh, you know, has a guest room or they can sleep on their couch or whatever. They need a place to put their head in a bed and Lowe's solves that problem, right? Now, Lowe's is in the business of lodging, but so is La Quinta Inn, right? So why would someone choose to stay at a Lowe's resort instead of a La Quinta Inn? I want you to be thinking about that with your business right now. You might have the same business as several other people, but why would somebody choose you over someone who is in the same business as you? Well, La Quinta Inn and Lowe's Hotels, those brands speak to two different types of customers completely. Um, obviously, those are different price points and um, different needs. But once you get more into like the same price point, the same type of lodging experience, you could say, well, why would you stay at a Lowe's Hotel compared to a JW Marriott? So if you're at your computer, Google these brands so that if you're not super familiar with them, hopefully you are. They're very strong brands um, in the lodging industry, all of them, including La Quinta Inn. Um, I just want you to kind of look at their imagery and that sort of thing as, as you're listening or, um, you know, go back, jot some notes down and go back to look at these websites. Um, so even with a Lowe's versus JW Merritt, they're still speaking to different customers. The Lowe's promise is we stay relevant to changing times and places to provide an experience that is authentically local and genuinely delivered. Also, our guests can relax, explore, and flourish. Now you can look up their, their brand promise online and, and it exists. In fact, all the brands that I talk about, this is all, you know, public information. Now let's look at our comparisons. So first, Lowe's is a luxury brand. So it's not going to appeal to a La Quinta Inn customer. Um, La Quinta Inn promises at La Quinta Inns, we're here to help both business and leisure travelers find their inner optimist. Your travel dollars go further with great rates and many free extras. Enjoy a free breakfast, comfy beds, and other amenities delivered with friendly service and a dose of humor. So yes, it's different price points, but it's also different personalities and different expectations as to what is included in the room rate. Notice Relax, explore, and flourish. Those are the things that Lowe's wants their guests to do. And La Quinta Inn is talking about making your travel dollars go further with great rates and many free extras, free, free, free. All this is included in the price, which you're not going to get at a resort. So those are very, very different examples. It would be the difference between maybe a um, Great Clips and a, well, maybe that's not the right because that's more male um, branded, but like a Supercuts or a high-end resort. Like, yes, they both cut hair, but you know what? Or a high-end um, salon, rather. They both cut hair, but they're just going to be different experiences. So now let's compare more like apples and apples. Um, against a JW Marriott, 
JW is looking for a guest who is quote accomplished. Like they say that in their materials. Um, they, the, these accomplished professionals seek an environment of simple elegance where guests feel welcome and free to be themselves. This is accomplished by orchestrating an experience that is expertly edited to leave only what is truly desired. Now that sounds very, um, a little more tightened, more buttoned up, right? So while these may sound similar in terms of what they're promising, if you if you read those two statements side by side, um, they're focusing on different outcomes for different types of guests. Lowe's and JW Marriott is. Lowe's is extremely focused on each hotel being uniquely local to its respective cities. There are no cookie cutter resorts. You can go and thumb through um, all their different resorts. They're um, especially, huh, well, I can't even pick a favorite, but they're beautiful. Um, they want their guests to feel a part of their brand, a part of that particular city that they're in. They want that full immersion experience so that they can relax, explore is a big word, and flourish as the ultimate goal. Now, JW, on the other hand, promotes a custom experience for people who value prominence and a desire uh, to have an intuitive service level. They're probably not traveling like with their dog, um, like a Lowe's guest is allowed to, because they don't want any distractions since they greatly value their time as a hot commodity. Probably less exploring like a Lowe's guest, um, more just think about it before I even get there wanting it as a need. Not that Lowe's doesn't do that, but maybe that's not the highest priority like a JW. And a JW is more of a timeless brand where Lowe's immediately promises that they're all about adapting to changing times and locations. So again, just different experiences there. Both are amazingly awesome and luxurious hotels. I mean, these brands are just top notch. But you can see that they meet different needs to create a different experience for different types of customers. Are there people who would be just as happy as a Lowe's as they would be a JW? Absolutely. But all in all, those brands are created to um, instill a brand loyalty so that you stay at a Lowe's hotel if you're in a city where there's a Lowe's hotel or you make a point of staying at a JW Marriott. That's why they have rewards programs and all those types of things so they can track what your preferences are. Okay. So I like using these resort brands as examples because most of the bombshells I work with deal with higher end clientele too. So spas and salons, maybe real estate agents selling large homes or luxury condos, attorneys navigating large settlements and unfortunate divorces. Uh, you get the picture. Just, um, you know, people who have higher expectations and a higher need for service. And most of my bombshells are service based. So I think it's important to point out what we can learn from my corporate work and some of of those more higher end brands. Okay. So there's some examples. Now it's time to create your brand promise. Now a brand promise is, as you saw, the commitment to deliver made between a brand and its audience. It's made in order to encourage an audience to buy. So where your mission statement was more like, this is, this is who we are. This is our North star. This is the basis for our decision-making and guidelines for, for where we're going as a business. Your brand promise is like, Hey, this is what we have to offer. Come exchange your money and we'll solve your problems this particular way. So you have a worksheet in the show notes of this episode, and I'm just going to ask you a bunch of questions right now and in that worksheet, um, because when it comes down to the nitty gritty, only a couple of those questions will actually lay out the meat of your brand promise. But I'm asking the rest of those questions so you start creating adjectives and descriptors that will add your unique business personality to your brand statement. I do not want to see any vanilla brand statements here, folks. When it comes to branding, I want you to show how you stand out so that people can ultimately in immediately say, yes, that's for me. No, that's not for me. Um, I won't share a brand, but um, me of all people tried to convince my husband we were going on a it was just a real quick trip. There was a super bargain. We literally made the decision the day before to leave and meet with a friend who was telling us about what she was doing with her kids for that weekend. So we're like, super, we're in, that's dirt cheap. So it didn't make sense to me if we were doing this quick, unplanned, dirt cheap um, experience to 
book at a hotel that we would normally stay in. And it was us and two 13 year old boys. It'd be fine. Right. So we um, <laughs> booked at this other hotel, which for the people who were staying there, I'm sure they were delighted with that experience. But for us, it was just like, whoa, we're probably never going to do this again because it took away from our overall experience. So the adjectives that I would use for that particular um, lodging establishment that we stayed at are very, very different than what I would use for the other types of hotels that we stay at. So um, I want you to think about that customer and what they're going to say about you. And, and that's exactly where we're going to get started. Okay, so let's get going. Question or statement number one. I want you to describe your business, your bi- you describe your business. Like, what do you think about your business in five words? Condense those down. If you could only pick five words to describe your business, what is that? Um, is it luxurious? Um, are you about efficiency? Are you affordable? Um, are you custom uh, or sustainable or holistic? Um, are you fair trade, um, high end? there's so many different words that you can use. And I want you to be very, very specific and don't use vanilla words. Don't use words like friendly. If your business isn't friendly, then you need to go back to the drawing board. Okay. So, um, what are, how are you friendly? Think about those words. Like if you said, well, I'm a friendly business and the people next to me are friendly business. I am, friendly in this way and they're friendly in that way. I want you to go deeper than those surface words that are easy. Bust out that thesaurus. Um, you know, ask your team members and I want you to come up with those five words. Um, in my very first bombshell business boot camp, which was a live um, six week weekly luncheon type experience, it was so much fun. These women were phenomenal bombshells. I was so privileged to get to be a part of their of their brands, and they're currently still bombshells in um, in the Bombshell Business Alliance uh, Mastermind. Um, I had several competing spas and salons in the same area, in the same county. Um, well, actually, we had five counties represented um, in the greater Nashville area. Uh, but a lot of them were, I mean, literally within a few miles of each other. So I put uh, screen captures of all of their brands up on, um, you know, like a, a keynote or a PowerPoint and asked everybody in the room to just start saying words that came to mind when I had that brand up. So it might've been of their website or it might've been of their Facebook page or whatever. And everybody was just shouting out words and I was tracking them. And um, at the end of the exercise, everybody in the room realized that while a lot of those businesses had the same business, meaning they solved the same problem in exchange for financial compensation, their brands were so completely different. It was really hard to consider each other competition. So when you're thinking about these words, think about that. You don't necessarily have to consider yourself competition with people who have like businesses because your branding should be so different that you attract a very niche type customer who would only want to work with you. So make this count for you. Um, Next, what do your customers say about you to their friends? You know, everybody, (laughs) this is, this is a really big one. Um, most people have about 15 people in their life that they talk to regularly every single week. And so they talk about their weeks, where they've been, their experiences. I know that every Tuesday night I meet up with a group of our friends and we just, you know, we're all mostly entrepreneurs and we talk about life and we talk about, you know, where, where we went over the weekend or whatever. And was it good or was it bad? Or, you know, you guys should skip that place. And, and so what do you want your customers to say about you to their friends? And I'm not, even getting into what people say on social media, like, oh my gosh, I just ate at such and such place and it was amazing. And you have to get this and tell them I sent you. Or are they saying, uh, it wasn't really worth the money or I wouldn't go back there. Or we just went to this place and it was awful. The service was terrible. That's, that's like next leveling on social media. I just want you to consider what do your customers say about you to their inner circle of friends? Okay. Number three, what do you want your customers to say about you? You know, there might be a little gap that you have to bridge there. Um, and maybe part of your brand statement uh, or brand promise is aspirational if you're not quite there yet. If you know people are saying some good things, some bad things, and you want them to say all these good things, we want to consider that as we're crafting your statement. The next three questions, super simple. What do you do? Oh, wait, that's not so simple, is it? 
I always get caught or, or I, rather I, I catch people. I say, well, what is it that you do? And it takes them 90 years to um, explain what it is that they do. Just keep it simple. I cut hair. I, I'm not asking you to like come up with a, a elevator pitch here. Just I cut hair. I um, offer spa services. Um, I sell upscale homes, whatever that is, just real quickly, what is it that you do? Um, next question, who do you do it for? Again, drill this in, not, um, you know, for the greater Nashville area. That's not enough. I want you to tell me who is your customer. Do you work with recently divorced women? Do you work with, um, uh, families who are going from, um, their, uh, maybe their second home to their dream home or their forever home? Do you work with um, single moms? I mean, I want you to be as specific as possible. You know, the people that I work with are generally high-end service providers. And if I dialed it even more so, it's probably going to be someone in um, uh, the spa or um, salon industry just because – um, that's where my word of mouth continues to spread. So, I mean, do my lawyers love me? Do my real estate agents love me? Do my coaches and fitness centers love me? Absolutely. But that takes a long time to try to hit all of those niches. So if I focus in on my spas and my salons and other people are going to see, oh, Amber helps service providers and they'll come find me anyway. So I'm not, I'm not, kicking anybody out of the club. I'm just really focusing my message and then leaving the door open for anybody else who happens to be drawn to that message too. Does that make sense? So what do you do? Who do you do it for? And then number six, how do you do it uniquely? Ooh, this is another one. Everybody aboard the struggle bus. This is hard to say, how do you do it uniquely? But I think once you start checking out your competition and you start comparing question number one, like what words describe you, and then you start describing your competitor's words, you can see how you are different. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to um, two places here where I live in Lebanon. They're both, they're both friends and um, I, I love both of their, um, their spas. So you have Body Needs, Julie Miller Wilson and Heather are the owners. It is a very um, natural, holistic, but still elegant and elevated experience. Um, they do a lot of body work that um, they're known for their massages. They have other services like pedicures and that sort of thing, but they're known for their more therapeutic massages. So somebody's going to go there that probably has some issues that it would be an ongoing, um, like me, I go there and I get ongoing treatment because I have um, a bad hip and I have very specific things and I, and I work out really hard. And one of my favorite things to do at the gym is lift really heavy things and put them back down and repeat that. So that's where they're super focused. And and they're kind of about whole body, so nutrition and and that sort of thing. You could go a couple miles up the road and go to Beauty Boutique. Now, Nicole Bell, on the other hand, when you walk into her place, you feel like you're in Newport, California, so or Newport Beach rather. Um, she is. She also offers massages. She off, also offers Botox and other things like that. But she has a salon in her establishment and a boutique. So she's more of a one-stop shop. I think she's more about the overall beauty experience, about um, makeup, um, skin, that sort of thing. Can you get facials and everything at Body Needs? Absolutely. It's going to be a different kind of facial than what you're going to get at Beauty Boutique. So very similar. Um, They both have the same problems that they solve, although they do have some different services that they each offer. But they do it so differently that those customers are probably going to be different customers in terms of their loyal, ongoing customers. Now, there's going to be people like me who go to different, to go to them for different things. Um, but they're same business, different business. Does that make sense? That's what I want you to think about. And and don't be scared of your competition. A high tide raises all ships. So just dial in on who it is that you're going after, and then let go of that feeling of. Um, competitiveness if it's not a healthy feeling. Okay. Number seven, 
I want you to list some wow moments you've had with your customers or employees. And I'm asking you this because, again, I want you to come up with some adjectives, some things, some some of the feelings that you get, some of the um, just the experiences, like what happens, like what's the soul of your business? How do you make your customers feel? How do you make your employees feel? Just like when we talked about JW Marriott and Lowe's Hotels, they talked about how they want their customers to feel and acknowledge how they want to be how they want to feel when they're doing business with them. So when you start thinking about those really fun experiences that you've had with your customers, that type of stuff bubbles up. Now, what do you want to be known for? Again, seemingly easy question, but that's hard. That's that's really hard to dial it in. Um, when you, uh, again, if you want to look at Beauty Boutique, you can say, oh, well, she has a boutique and she has a spa and she has a hair salon. And, um, you know, wow, those are lots of different things. But if you know the brand and Nicole does a very good job of promoting her brand, it's a one-stop shop for beauty. It's, it's just where you go. And then you don't have to like go to lots of different places. It's all there. And so that's what she wants to be known for. And it's, it's great. Um, so let's take all that information and let's get down to the brass tacks. So your brand promise, here's the formula that I want you to use. I want you to list your company name, what problem you solve, how you solve it uniquely and, and for who? So your company name solves this problem uniquely this way for these specific people. Jot down those answers. Again, number one, your company name. Number two, solves this problem. Number three, uniquely this way. Number four, for these specific people. Now, that's the meat of it. But remember, you answered all those other questions to get the feelings and the emotions and the descriptors and that sort of thing. So I want you to take those that meat that we just got out and make it a complete sentence using the formula that I gave you and some of the descriptive words that were revealed in the questions you've answered already. And then you will have your official brand promise. It doesn't have to be super long. In fact, you don't really want it to be wordy. It's something that you do want to share with your potential customers and maybe put somewhere on your website. And it's something that you want your employees to genuinely be able to understand and digest and absolutely know what it is that they're supposed to be doing and what what they're supposed to be delivering to your customers so that they get the brand experience that you've promised as a business owner. So lots of questions, but I promise it's easy peasy. Shoot, shoot me your brand promise. Let me see it. Put your brand promise in, um, in the show notes and in, in the comments. I would love to see it. And hopefully, um, if I'm not overwhelmed with them, I can certainly give you feedback. Um, it would bring me so much joy to see you work through the, this process and really get clear on what it is that you're promising to your customers. Um, so go to amberhurdle.com forward slash episode zero four, download the worksheet if you haven't already to get that brand promise worksheet and work through all of that good fun stuff. And uh, then be sure to tune in next episode because we will be talking about the final layer of the business success pyramid, level three, your personal brand. So level one, your company culture, level two, your brand, and then level three, your personal brand. So of course, I sincerely hope that you're enjoying this podcast and that you're getting all kinds of good nuggets from it that you can apply to your day to day. Um, I would absolutely appreciate it if you would go to iTunes and give this podcast a five star review if you think it's worthy of one. If not, hey, be honest. You know, I like to um, shoot you straight. I've got my own velvet machete and I would love to know what I could be doing better for you too if you wanted to let me know that. Um, of course, a five star would be lovely too. And uh, let others know why you love the Bombshell Business Podcast um, in your review of it so um, so they know that they should listen to it too. Uh, just to be truthful and honest and transparent, the more reviews and, and um, five-star reviews and more of the uh, any type of review actually I get, the more chances I get to appear in the section called new and noteworthy. So when people are looking for what type of podcast they should be listening to new and noteworthy, um, directs them to some of the more popular ones. And then I get more listeners and then I get to help more people for free. And that's kind of the jam. That's the entire point of this podcast. So I would super appreciate that and be sure to subscribe. So you never miss an episode. And so you can easily forward episodes that you think your fellow bombshells might enjoy too. So in the meantime, until we meet again, don't forget to be bold, brave, and unwaveringly confident in your business and life because that's exactly what makes a bombshell. See you next time. 
on the Bombshell Business Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Bombshell Business Podcast. Visit AmberHurdle.com for more resources and be sure to tune in again. Cheers to you, Bombshell. Bombshell.